debate was really about getting beneficiaries into work, then the government should actually be showing us what the plan is to create growth and grow jobs. Because the reality is, is that it's all very well to talk about this bill, but the context for which they promote beneficiaries into jobs have to have the other part of the equation, which is where are the jobs? Now, what people who, who are listening to the debate want to know is what is the government's plan to create jobs in small communities so that people ha- beneficiaries have real choices for real wages and real jobs? And a fair go at it, because we know on this side of the House that, yes, beneficiaries want to work, but no, the government isn't doing anything to create jobs. And there's nothing more simple about that message and why don't the govern- doesn't the government get it? Everyone else gets it, but the government doesn't get it. This bill is not just about talking about opportunities for beneficiaries without creating the opportunity, which is jobs and employment. The Minister was quick to get to her feet and talk about all the good things uh, that are being d- done to support those on the DPB, those mums on the DPB, into work. Like her, I too have visited a number of teen parent units throughout the country. I want to know why the Minister cut the young parent allowance. Why did she cut the young parent allowance? Why, didn't, why did she take away an allowance that goes to young parents who have had children that enables them to get their children to the childcare centre and study as well? That's what she's done. That's the little glimmer of light that she's snubbed out uh, for, those, for those young parents. I also want to know... Why is it that those, the aspiration of a lot of those teen parents is to, is to go to further education, higher education, often to polytech or university? Why did the minister cut out the entitlement for the tertiary incentive allowance to, be, uh, to fund level four and above courses? Because those teen parents, yes, indeed they want to work, but they know that they need to get a better and higher qualification to create a better opportunity for them and their little whānau, a better quality of life. No answer to that by the Minister. What is worse, the Minister fails to come up with a plan for those teen parents to say, well, here's where the jobs are, actually. She's all one-sided in the debate in terms of saying, we want to get beneficiaries off the benefit and into work. We agree with that but no response about where the jobs are, and that's really important. The member just before me talked about the work testing of sickness beneficiaries, and a lot of people who know how the system works know that people who have come from full-time employment and onto the sickness benefit will not stay there for long. They want to get back into full-time employment. That's not who we're talking about. I suspect we're talking about a high proportion of sickness beneficiaries who actually uh, have... Um, and this is feedback from many uh, working income officers who are actually have some form of mental illness. Yep. And the difficulty there is that even if Bro. they're medically assessed to work for 15 hours, the p- employers aren't flexible enough to respond to those types of needs in the workplace. What if, for example, and we're talking about highly functioning people who may at times have some uh, bouts of depression or some type of mental illness which <coughs> prevents them from from working a full part-time 15-hour shift. So the, 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 the question here to the Minister is that why, while they can be medically assessed to work 15 hours, the workplace may not be responsive enough to deal and cope with the challenges that some people face in their everyday life to work a full 15-hour period. No response whatsoever from the Minister on that simple point. And these are real people who face those types of challenges, who are assessed medically to work, but they can't find a job or an employer who are responsive to their needs. They can't find an employer who says, well, OK, we accept that uh, you'll be in for 15 hours this week. And then they might ring up and say, look, I'm having a bad week. I just can't make it next week. Will they be responsive? I suspect not. And we, we are actually treating some of the most vulnerable people, I think, in a way that is unfair and that could actually be detrimental to the ongoing quality of life and, and well-being. We are not talking about the proportion of people who are on the sickness benefit for a period of time and go back into full-time employment. Most people who come from full-time employment only want to be on the sickness benefit for a short time because they know there's a full-time job there. I suspect we're talking about the greater proportion of people who are in the category that I've already spoken about.